Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be taking a look at this Toshiba satellite laptop from 1994. Oh yeah. So this nice little white creamy laptop with the ballpoint mouse here is one of the earlier satellite models from Toshiba. A lot of you probably remember these kind of purplish satellite Toshiba laptops mostly sporting like an Intel Pentium CPU. But the one that I'm going to be talking about today has an earlier CPU, which is a 486. So just to give you kind of a comparison, this is more the Intel Pentium style Toshiba satellite laptops, where this is the 486 generation. So yeah, pretty nice looking laptop. As you can see, there is no pointing device on the keyboard itself that is separate. On the left of the LCD display, we can see the model number, which is the T1910CS and the Intel Inside logo. Just a really nice looking laptop. But yeah, what really stands out on this laptop is this ballpoint mouse device that you attach to the side of the laptop. You know, instead of using a mouse, you just plug one of these into your laptop and you are good to go. So yeah, pretty interesting little laptop to explore here. It has a nice little keyboard here. So yeah, let's take a look at the specs and see what we have going on here on this Toshiba T1910CS. So at its core, we have the Intel 486SX running at 33 megahertz. We have four megabytes of RAM, although it can be expanded to 20 megabyte. This version here has a dynamic STN dual scan color LCD running at a resolution of 640 by 480. We have a three and a half inch disk drive, 1.44 meg and a 200 megabyte hard drive. We can attach a an external PS2 keyboard, we have serial parallel PCMCIE slots, uh, VGA port, we have a 2600 milliamp hour battery giving us three hours of battery life back in the day. And initially this came with a Microsoft DOS 6.2 and Windows 3.1. On the front of the laptop, we have the battery here. We have the 1.44 megabyte hard drive and the mouse pointer. On the side here, we have the AC or the DC power input. We have the power button. And then we have the release button for the battery. On the other side, we have the ballpoint mouse device. If we remove that, we can see that it hooks up using these five pins here. Next to that, we have a slot cover that doesn't seem to contain anything until you slide away this cover that is, which exposes a PS2 mouse and keyboard connector. And just above the two PCMCIe card covers, we also have this little RAM expansion slot here, which can bump the four megabytes of memory all the way up to 20 megabytes of RAM. On the back, we also have a VGA connector to hook up an external display. And then behind this cover here, a parallel port to hook up a printer and a serial port to hook up something like a pointing device. On the top here, we have the Toshiba logo and the T1910CS logo. We have a nice little keyboard. It's not the best keyboard I've ever used. Also, the keys have a weird layout. For example, I don't really like how the control key is positioned here. Uh, so doing stuff like control escape is a bit clumsy and control uh, all tap, for example. Yeah. But then again, I have seen worst, so it's definitely OK. We also have a couple of LEDs here, one for the power and the speed, the caps lock, the overlay, num lock the disk LEDs, battery, and the power input LED. As soon as we hook up the power supply, we can see that the DC in lights up and the battery icon starts flashing. When we turn on the computer, the power LED goes on and then it goes through its boot up sequence and then you should see some activity on both the A drive and the C drive. 
also have an LED for the num lock and the caps lock. I'm not really sure what the overlay is all about. There is a dedicated overlay button on the keyboard, but I'm not really sure what that does. On the back of the machine, we have the T1900CS model number. The battery, normally I should be able to remove it, but it's kind of stuck. Perhaps, you know, it's gotten corroded to the point where you just can't remove it anymore. We also have these little standoffs here. Unfortunately, one of them was broken, but that's just kind of tilt the laptop uh, into position and perhaps make it more ergonomically to, to type on it. I'm not really sure. We also have a little latch here to remove the expansion cards on the right of the machine. Now I did ran into some issues as I was trying to insert a three and a half inch floppy disk in the machine. It just wouldn't go in. And you know, as I was moving the machine around, I could hear something moving around uh, in the machine. So upon closer inspection, I noticed that there was actually something stuck in the floppy disk drive of this computer. And yeah, a uh, classic here, you know, one of these protective covers of the three and a half inch floppy disks got uh, detached from the actual floppy disk and was left behind in this disk drive here. So now I could insert a disk and eject it again. So that's already good. Now the ball point mouse device here, this little external device that clips onto the right hand side. It can also be uh, positioned to suit your, you know, hand position ergonomically. It has uh, three buttons here. It has the actual ballpoint, um, Microsoft ballpoint mouse version 2.0 with quick port connection. So yeah, pretty cool to see in an early laptop like this. Just clicks on to the right hand side like so. And then you just use the ballpoint to move your mouse around. You have uh, three keys here. Uh, I think two of the keys act as the right hand button. The other one acts as the left hand button. It's a bit awkward to use at first, but you know, once you kind of get the hang of it, it kind of works. You can also position it ergonomically to suit your needs. So you can tilt it upright like so. I tend to use it uh, pointing down like this and, you know, can be easily detached if you want to use something like an actual mouse. It uses these five pins here to attach itself to the computer. And like I said, I mean, it does require a little bit of practice. If you haven't used one of these things before, you will definitely uh, switch the mouse buttons or um, have some trouble navigating with the pointing device. But you know, once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad. But now let's start the computer and see what we've got here. I'm gonna show it on my external monitor. It's a little bit easier to capture. So when we start the machine, we get the Toshiba post message. It does a memory count. So we have four megabytes of RAM and then it will just boot into the operating system. In this case, somebody was brave enough to install Windows 95 on this 486 SX33. However, if you hit escape F1 during the startup sequence, you will enter the CMOS setup utility. Now there's not a whole lot going on here. We can change some settings here like the serial ports, the LCD display modes, some you know, CPU caches, uh, processing speeds, but yeah, nothing special, very limited. So yeah, like I said, somebody did install Microsoft Windows 95 on this machine. Now, given that this is a machine from 1994, this would have been shipped with Microsoft Windows 3.1 or 3.11. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find the original software for this Toshiba laptop, so I just kept it as is. It does take a minute or two to boot into Microsoft Windows 95 before it becomes actually usable. And you know, you need to take usable with a big grain of salt because 
I mean, obviously this machine is a little bit underpowered for an operating system like Microsoft Windows 95, given the fact that it only has four megabytes of RAM and that the clock speed of this 486 CPU is 33 megahertz. But yeah, after a while, your patience will be rewarded and you can start using Microsoft's Windows 95. The version which was installed here also contained a copy of Microsoft Office that we're going to try and navigate using our ballpoint mouse device. Again, it takes a while to load up Microsoft Word in this case. I mean, just to get the splash screen, you need to wait about 20 seconds. So that doesn't really position itself as kind of a speed demon. Microsoft Word eventually is launching, but again, I mean, there's lots of hard drive activity. So yeah, it's gonna be pretty painful to do, uh, to, to be kind of productive on a machine like this. I mean, probably the easiest thing would be to just install Microsoft Windows 3.11, which I think would run a lot better on this machine. Now the color display on this machine is a passive LCD, so it's not an active TFT matrix. So you can um, change the contrast of the display a little bit, but you know the viewing angles aren't that great. As soon as you um, look at it at a certain angle, you're going to be losing a lot of the the the, the screen visibility. But I mean, it's definitely okay. There is there is definitely some ghosting, even as you're just typing around in a, a Word document, let alone playing games on this thing, which will be pretty challenging due to the ghosting effect of this uh, passive uh, LCD display. But then again, I can imagine in 1994, you would still have lots of laptops that would be limited uh, with a monochrome LCD display. So the fact that you were able to display, you know, 16 colors on this thing was pretty mind boggling, I can imagine. Although it doesn't really make up for the best uh, gaming experience. Fortunately, the games that you would be playing on this type of machine wouldn't be all that action packed. But in all honesty, playing a game like this is more of a drunken driver simulation game at best. Now, luckily, we can also hook up an external display because it does have a VGA port. And when you hook up an external monitor, obviously, you don't run into the limitations of the passive LCD display, meaning that you get a, a lot more performance uh, out of your display. So yeah, if you ever feel the need to play Super Mario on this Toshiba laptop, I would recommend hooking up an external display. So yeah, that's it for me. I just wanted to show you guys this laptop real quick. I really like these really early Toshiba satellite laptops, you know, the pre-Pentium era. Um, the fact that it runs Windows 95 definitely is not the best match. Would be nice to get the original software for it. Really like this ball point mouse thingy here. Kind of gives it a special uh, look and feel. But anyways, thought you might enjoy this little overview here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.